Hey guys, Brian here in the lab coming back at you and today we're talking reptile photography. We're going to go over all the tips and keys and all the little things that I use to get great pictures of my geckos and help you guys get great pictures of your animals as well. We're going to talk about everything from high-end interchangeable lens, mirrorless and DSLR cameras, point and shoots, and even how to use your cell phone to get good pictures. So let's dig right into it. This is the Complete Reptile Photography Guide. So first up, let's talk about different camera options that you can use to get pictures of your reptiles. Now the biggest factor in really learning how to optimize the pictures that you get is using the manual settings in your camera. Then you can adjust the settings to get the picture that you want, instead of using the auto settings to get the picture that the camera gives you. Now in the past you had to get a high-end DSLR interchangeable lens camera to be able to adjust your manual settings, but these days that's not the case. While you'll get the best results with a setup like that, you can adjust manual settings in both point and shoot cameras and most cell phone cameras these days. So really any of these are an option. Cell phones are great because everybody has one, so you really don't need to go buy anything extra. If you want to upgrade from that, a really nice point and shoot anywhere in the three to five hundred dollar range, even down in the hundred and fifty dollar range for some models, you can get a really nice point and shoot camera that's going to do great. The next step up from that is going to be interchangeable lens cameras. These are both mirrorless and DSLRs depending on what system you're with. I use the Sony a7 III, though Canon and Nikon both have great options. And for interchangeable lens cameras, I prefer a macro lens. I use the Sony 90mm macro. There's a lot of different options. I'm not going to get too long-winded about it here, but if you guys look at the description down below, I'll list a couple different camera and macro lens options that you can pair up for several different budget ranges from the three big manufacturers, Sony, Canon, and Nikon. So just check the link down below, look through some of those if you're shopping, and get an idea of what you might like. Now let's talk a little bit about the settings in your camera that you can adjust to optimize your pictures. The first one of those is your shutter speed. Now this is pretty simple, the shutter speed is just how fast the shutter opens and closes to allow the light to come in to gather the picture. Now the quicker the shutter speed, obviously the less light you're going to get in, so the darker your picture will appear, but also the less motion blur. So if your animal is moving, a fast shutter speed will freeze that animal in place and you won't see motion blur. A real long shutter speed, the animal moves while the shutter's open and you get a blurry picture. I like to shoot at 1 200th of a second, and that generally gets me a good amount of light while also being a fast enough shutter speed that if my gecko is moving a little bit or even if they're licking their eyeball it freezes their tongue or their foot in the picture and you don't get motion blur. Now the second setting you're going to want to pay attention to is your aperture. This is often referred to as your f-stop. Now the smaller the number on your aperture the wider your aperture is and the more light your lens can gather. On the other side the higher the number, the smaller your aperture and your in image gathers less light. Now on top of that, a wider aperture that gathers more light gives you a shallow depth of field. As you can see in this example here, a shallow depth of field means there's less depth of the picture in focus. So while one part of your gecko might be in focus, the other parts will be out of focus and blurry. Because of this, I, use, I like to use a smaller aperture, that's to say a bigger aperture number, that gives me a wider depth of field to keep the whole gecko in focus. Because when you're showing off your gecko, you want people to see every part of it, not just the head or leg or body or eyeball. The entire gecko needs to be in focus so people can see what your animal looks like. I prefer to shoot at a minimum of f5.6, and ideally I like to shoot at f8 or f9 to ensure that I have a wide depth of field and my entire gecko is in focus. Now the last setting you should pay attention to is your ISO. Now ISO measures the sensitivity of the sensor on your camera. So basically it works like this. The lower the ISO number, the less light that it gathers, the less sensitive that it is, but also the less noise that you'll see in the image. The higher the ISO number, the more sensitive your sensor is, so it gets more light for a brighter picture, but it introduces more noise. Noise is a real grainy, almost pixelated looking feature that you'll see at high SOs. The easy way to, that most people notice this is if you've ever taken a picture of yourself at night with your cell phone, a lot of people, if you're doing a selfie, maybe at a bar or in a club or outside during the night, 
and you look at it and it looks real grainy and pixelated, that's noise. That's being caused because your phone is automatically turning the ISO way up to compensate for the fact that it's really dark out. So the way I like to do my settings is to set my aperture and my shutter speed first, usually 1 200th of a second for the shutter speed, f8 for my aperture, and then I can adjust my ISO up or down to where I need it to be to get the correct exposure for the amount of light I have for that picture. Generally with geckos I'm shooting at an ISO of about two, between two and four hundred. Ideally I don't like to go over eight hundred just to keep that noise level down. Now that we've gone over your camera settings, let's talk about lighting. And I've always said lighting is the biggest factor to getting good pictures of your animals. There's two basic ways to go about getting artificial light into your photos to get good pictures. While a lot of people will say taking photos outside is best, I don't really subscribe to that because then your entire photography schedule is based around not only the time of day but the weather and if you can take your geckos out and then you're risking taking your geckos outside which I don't like to do. It's just so much easier and so much more reliable to get consistent results with artificial lighting. Now the two different ways to do this are either consistent lights or flashes. Now if you're going to use a point and shoot or a, cam a cell phone camera, you have to use constant lights, not flashes. If you're using an interchangeable lens camera with what's called a hot shoe on the top, that's this guy here, you can use flashes but you can also use constant lights. Now if you look at the links down below, I've linked a setup for a constant light setup by a company called Mount Dog. Now this setup is very cheap and it should be very effective. It consists of two 95 watt constant lights. It comes with soft boxes and stands for your lights. Now I used a setup very, very similar to this for years, six or seven years to take pictures of my geckos before I switched to flashes. And the good part about this is these lights come with soft boxes, and these soft boxes diffuse the light so you don't get harsh bright spots on your geckos, and it does essentially the same thing as a photo tent. So you hear a lot of people say you need a photo tent for a proper setup. I use a photo tent, but with the soft boxes, it kind of eliminates that need so you don't have to buy money on a photo tent. Spend money on a photo tent, you just need a setup, whatever you're going to put your gecko on for your background put those lights right over the top with the constant lights through the soft boxes to diffuse that light and that will give you really bright, constant, even light to take great photos all the time. Now the other lighting option is flashes. Now the one thing you don't want to do is use your on-camera flash. Most interchangeable lens cameras have a pop-up flash, all point-and-shoots have a pop-up flash, and all cell phones have a flash built in. You never want to use these. They don't look good it gives out a really harsh light that always ends up with bright spots and spots that are blown out and it just never works. You don't want to use those. If you want to use flashes, I've linked a good kit down below that you can look at and either get, some, get that one, get something like it, or just use it for a starting place to research what you want. Now the kit that I've listed down below I really like. It comes with two, I believe they're 300 watt, yeah, two 300 watt mono lights with soft boxes, so these are like big strobe lights, and it comes with a radio receiver like this. Now what this does is if you have an interchangeable lens camera with a hot shoe, you can attach this right onto your camera and it's a radio transmitter that goes to your flashes. So there's no wires, no cords, no hassle to set it up, and as soon as you take a picture, the radio transmitter transmits that to the flashes, they go off, and you get beautiful pictures. Again, those come with built-in soft boxes, so that helps diffuse that light, which is something that your built-in flashes cannot do, and that's the main difference on why they look better. So that's a great option. I use a setup very similar to the one I've linked below, and it works absolutely great. Now let's go ahead and set up my photo booth, and we'll look at this in action. I'll show you guys how to get some good shots. All right, I've got our photo booth all set up here. As you can see, we've got the light tent, one strobe on each side, our display rock for the geckos to sit on, and our camera with the transmitter attached. Now what I like to do is to pack the geckos up that I want to photograph as if they're being shipped. I put them in a wet deli cup, put them inside a styrofoam box, and let them sit for about half an hour, and that usually gets them to fire up so their colors are looking at their best for their photos. 
And then it's fairly simple. You just take the gecko out. I set them right on the log. Sometimes it takes a little bit of posing to get them right where they want. Sometimes this guy sits just like this. Absolutely perfect. This beautiful lily white boy is going to be our model for the day. Then you just go in, make sure he's in focus, and snap a photo. Absolutely perfect. It's that easy. It really is very simple. Once you get the right setup and you know the settings on your camera, it takes a little bit of playing with to get that just right and learn exactly what you're doing. But once you've got it, calm down, buddy. Once you've got the idea, it's real simple. Just like that. That's a quick guide for how to take better pictures of all your animals. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. Photography is my number one passion right behind geckos. They're like 1A, 1B. So mixing these two together, this is really what I enjoy. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below. I love talking photography and I love talking geckos. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helped you out. Don't forget to visit us, altitudeexotics.com, Facebook, Instagram. You guys know the deal. We'll see you next time.